The year of our Lord 1914, on a farm in rural Buckinghamshire. <sighs> it's not what it used to be. Hello there. Have you heard the news? I haven't. It's happened. We're at war. Oh. Is that all? What do you mean? It's exciting. They say it's going to be over before Christmas. So, I'm sending young Joe to the barracks. But you'll have no young hands on the farm. What if something happens? Ah, uh, the war will be the making of the boy. Of course, we'll have to hire some help, but it'll only be for a couple of months. I see. Say, Jack, why are you outside in this weather? Can't this wait until the morning? This is no time to be bailing. We're at war, don't you know? What does the war have to do with me? I just don't have the time, Joanne. I just don't have the time. Jack? Good evening. What brings you here so late? Have you heard the news? I've been thinking about it all day. We're at war. Yes, I know. I'm signing up tomorrow. Tess will look after the farm, but I suppose I'll have to get a couple of boys in from the village. It's no work for a woman, although I'm sure her father will be happy to help where he can. He used to be a farm boy himself as a lad. It's not ideal, but it'll all be over by Christmas. They'll only have to take care of the harvest. I've trusted them with that before. I'll keep an eye on them when I can. Who is it? I warn you, I'm armed. Don't shoot. Please, Jack, it's me. I lost my arm to a German shell, so they sent me home. The fools, I've still got plenty of fight left in me. I think you'd better come inside. Let's have a nip of whiskey and you can tell me all about it. A pint of whiskey? Quick, before I fetch my shotgun. If you're looking for trouble, you can walk out of that door and find somewhere else. I ain't having any violence. You, sir? You're good for nothing. What's wrong with you? I got a letter. It's my son. He's dead. If I wasn't afraid of damnation, I might have done something stupid. <laughs> Don't talk like that. Things are never that bad. He's right. You need to sober up and look at things in the light of day. Is this what your son will want? Kneeling in a ditch, abandoning your family, your farm, your sanity? I suppose you're right. I need to talk to a priest. Jack, would you be kind enough to walk me home? You know me, Joanne. Always happy to help. Evening, Jack. How are things? I hope my wife has provided for you. Thank you. You're a lucky man. That I am. So what can I do for you? I'm struggling. The storm hit us badly. You know all the damage it caused and how hard I've worked to repair it. I've been looking at my supplies and I don't have enough to last through the winter. I'm here to ask whether I can harvest my section of your fields. Normally I wouldn't ask, but... The problem is, we're both grateful for your help, but we have our son to provide for and times are hard. P perhaps if things were better... It's all right. I understand. Didn't Ellison promise a share of her land to you, old friend? She did. I'll go right over and see her. So what do you say, Joanne? Do you think you could help me? I'd love to help you. I really would. But things aren't going well. 
You've seen for yourself how the crops have failed. And the chickens just aren't laying. I've tried everything. I'm sorry. I'd help you if I could. I Didn't you have a similar deal with Slater? I did. I'll pay him a visit. The autumn drew to an end and the winter freeze began. All of the farmers were hungry, but the ploughman's supplies were exhausted. Even his chickens were dead, swallowed with the gruel that sustained him. Now, lying in his bed, too weak to forage for food or to light the fire, he was dying. With an almighty effort, he lifted his head from the mattress and looked over at the wall. The kind faces of his wife and daughter looked down upon him. He tried to reach out to them, but he didn't have the strength. His family stared down at him, immortalised by the canvas, waiting for him to join them. A cold wind blew down through the chimney, and the ploughman sobbed himself to sleep. The breeze cut through his bones, and his valiant heart surrendered to the inevitable. The English sky grew darker. A storm was on its way. The Ploughman, written by Dane Cobain, starring Twanglin Jack, a.k.a. Dave Ford, as The Ploughman, Susie DeMarco as Ellison, Paul Cooper as Slater, Matt Moon as The Barkeep, and Dane Cobain as the narrator.